tutorial you will learn how to use assets from Quixel Megascans in V-Ray, we will explore how to transfer data with Quixel Bridge, add details with normal and displacement maps, and then finalize our asset with a simple shading network. So in this video here, we will discuss the workflow that it takes to bring assets from Quixel Megascans into, in this case, 3ds Max and V-Ray, how you need to set up all the maps correctly, and how you need to prepare the model in order to get a good and accurate result. Let me first show you where you can find this and that's on quixel.com here. You can get access to this huge asset library and it's actually for free for Unreal Engine 5 users. If you want to use it for offline renderers such as V-Ray or Corona and so on, then you need to pay a small fee, but I think the pricing is really competitive. You can get access to really high quality scans in here. So here, the Mega Scans tab, you can see what kind of like different kind of models they offer here and it's also being used in many kind of movies and so on and the special thing is that basically all of the things in this library is real life scans with different kind of maps here so you can see you have diffuse maps and you have reflection maps and normal maps and so on and everything that you need to recreate basically these kind of scanned environment pieces here as realistic as possible in whatever environment you're using it in and yeah once you joined here their payment plan basically you can then download this quixel bridge software and that is the software that basically connects your renderer or your 3d software with this whole asset library so now let's dive into bridge and then see what we can do in there and how we can then bring those models here into in our case 3s max and v-ray so now we are in Quixel Bridge and that's the software that connects our Megascans asset library with our 3D software of choice. In our case, that's 3ds Max and V-Ray. And we can see that there's two different kind of assets in here. So one would be these surfaces. That means that there is no 3D model attached to it. It is just the scanned maps that you need, but you need to put it on your own surfaces in your 3D scene. The other ones would be these kind of full 3D assets. So that means you have a 3D geometry already and then also all the correct maps which are matching already on the 3D geometry. And that's the one that we're gonna focus on for now in this video. We will go to collections and then inside here, there's different kind of collections already prepared where the assets have been grouped in different kind of scenarios. We will go for different kind of environments collections. For example, here, if we go to environment and then we can choose natural environment collections. And then inside here, we can choose, for example, this Arctic ice and snow collection. And then let's find some assets which we like. In our case, we want to build some kind of snowy island in the ocean. So I will choose this huge snow hill asset in here. And then we can basically export it directly to 3ds Max in our case. But first the model would need to be downloaded. So in this case, I downloaded the model already. If you didn't download it yet, then you will not get this blue checkbox here on the upper left corner. So this one doesn't have this checkbox. That would mean I first need to download it. And in this case, it will cost me four points, which I would need to purchase before, but then I have this model here forever. I can use it for any kind of project that I want to do in the future. So this model here has been downloaded already, and then I can just export it with the correct resolution that I want to choose earlier. So in this case, I will just choose 4K resolution because in this kind of scenario, I think that's plenty. And then inside here, our export settings, we can choose our export target. In this case, that is 3ds Max. And if the plugin hasn't been installed yet, you will find all the necessary information inside here, how you can install this plugin. So you can see in my case, it is already installed. If it hasn't been installed, the steps here should be pretty easy to install it by yourself. And then all of these other settings here, I just leave them at default. So now we will just click this export button and then we will see what will happen in 3ds Max. So we will get a message that it's exporting. And then once the export finished, I will get this exported successfully message in here. And now we can switch to 3ds Max and see what has happened there. So now in 3ds Max, we can see two things. So one would be the scene that I prepared for this demonstration, which is this ocean scene. And you can find the scene, by the way, on my Patreon together with some bonus lesson about this class here in particular. And the other thing is that we can see that now the asset which we selected before has been imported here into our scene. So the first thing to do is to check if the model has been brought in with the correct scaling. And for this, we just select the model 
and then go to our scaling tools. And then we will find that in this case, the scaling here is set to 10 and the default value should be 100. And this always happens if your unit setup in your scene are anything different than centimeters. So in this case, I have one unit equals 0.1 meters. And that's why the asset has been brought in with a kind of different or wrong scaling in this case. So what I would do in this case would be to just set back the local scaling here to 100 and then go in these kind of tools and then my measure tools and then just make sure that the dimensions of the object is now correctly. So for example, here it would be 150 meters long and around 20 meters high. And I think that's something that's kind of plausible for this kind of snow island. So let's just leave it at here. But if you find that your scaling in the scene is totally wrong, then you just scale the object to the correct scaling. For example, if you want this here to be 65 meters high, then you just scale it up. And then afterwards you would reset the X form so that the local scaling would be set back to 100. But in our case, everything is correct. So we just leave it in here and also just make sure that this local scaling is back to 100 again. And then we can proceed with the next step. So then we can check here in this modifier tab and we can see that Quixel Bridge already applied a V-Ray displacement modifier here by default. And that's something that I would normally not start with. I would first try to see if I can get all the detail through a normal map. And also by default, Quixel applies basically a normal map and the displacement modifier, which basically doesn't really make sense. So it should be either a normal map or a displacement modifier. So in this case, first let's just collapse everything here to an editable mesh. And then also because I normally prefer to work with editable poly, just also switch that here to editable poly. And then just to make sure that here our normals are all smooth and all without any kind of issue, we'll just apply a mesh smooth modifier and then also choose here iterations of zero. And then we don't really get some more smoothing in the mesh itself, but we will just make sure that all the normals have been smoothed and bring back to their default values. Then we can just collapse this here to an editable poly and then just check out what is the next step. So now let's start the rendering and see what we get. And at the same time, we can also rename here our asset to something a little bit more destructive and then also put it in its own layer in our scene. Now we can see that our asset is unfortunately floating a little bit on top of the surface. So let's just move it down a notch so that it has this effect that it's disappearing here below the water surface. And now it really looks like this island is coming out of the ocean in here. Now we will check what kind of changes we have to do to the shader in order to make it look realistic because at the moment it looks like there's a lot of detail missing in here. So let's dive into the shader network that Quixel Bridge prepared for us and then see what kind of changes we have to do in order to make it show correctly. So the good thing when using this plugin is that it also generates this kind of dummy shading network here for you. And I normally tend to not use it because there are some problematic settings in here, which I think don't really make sense. And oftentimes it also connects way more maps than you actually need. For example, some baked occlusion maps and so on, which don't really make sense to use in an offline renderer like V-Ray. So I normally just use it to know like what kind of maps come together with it. And then I just start a completely new V-Ray material from scratch. And now we just do this and assign this V-Ray material here to our selection. And then let's see how we can use those maps in here in order to get all the details to show here correctly on our island. So basically there are two ways to bring details here on our surface and one would be to use a normal map and the other one would be to use a displacement map. So let's first only focus about like this part, how we can get this detail here onto our island. And for this, we just zoom in a little bit and then the first step we will do is to apply a normal map in here and then afterwards we will check out the displacement map workflow. So now for the normal map, we just copy the one that came here with the shader from the plugin. And then we have the correct location here already set up. And the only thing we need to make sure is that we don't use any color space transfer functions here in our V-Ray bitmap. So 
This one should be set to none. That means we just load the raw data here from the map. And then also this filter multiplier, I will normally put this here to the minimum value so that we just don't get any additional filtering applied to here. And we get a lot of details showing up in here on our model. So now the question is how we connect this normal map in here. And for this, we just need to add a new V-Ray normal map node and then connect this one here in the normal map slot and then this one here in the bump map slot of our material. And now we have something showing up already on our island. So now there are two things to do. So first of all, we go into our shader and then just make sure that our bump map or normal map in this case is loaded with a value of 100 because anything lower than that does not really load the full data in here. So that means the normal map or the bump details will be just much less intense than they were baked out. So always make sure to use this value of 100. And for whatever reason, V-Ray always has this default value of 30 for the bump map. And now you can see we have a lot of detail showing up in here already, but something looks weird because we have like the sun coming from back here, but somehow the highlight position does not really seem to match correctly with the position of our sun and you can also check that here in the normal map render element that somehow it looks somewhat inverted so in order to fix that we need to go into our v-ray normal map and then normally switch this green channel because v-ray uses a slightly different approach to calculate the normal maps than they were baked out from the quixel megascans library so once you flip this green channel in here everything is correct and now the highlights they kind of match the sun position and this now just looks much more accurate for example this step here is missing in the plugin so the plugin does not load the normal map correctly and it also loads it only with this default value of 30 in here and that's why you get not the correct result so that would be the workflow of how to use a normal map, but you can also use a displacement map and that's what we're gonna do now. So for this, we normally need to disable here our bump map or normal map in this case. And then we just duplicate the normal map. And the only reason why we duplicate is that because we have then the correct folder in here. And then this one is our displacement map. So that's a 32-bit EXR displacement map. And the reason why it shows here in red is because it only exports one channel, only the red channel, because basically only need one channel. And that makes the file size much smaller. So don't be distracted by this kind of red color. And also if you load it here with the V-Ray bitmap, you can see it just loads this kind of grayish color. And then once we do that, we also make sure that this color space transfer function is set to none again. And then also this filter multiplier is set to zero as well. Then we can go to our modifier tab and add a V-Ray displacement modifier and make sure that the type is set to subdivision and then also connect our displacement map here into this texture map slot. And now you can see, first of all, nothing really happens apart from that the model looks a little bit more smooth than it did before. But in order to bring the detail out from the displacement map, we need to raise this amount value, for example, to a value of two. And then we have the displacement map showing up on the surface. You will also see that the higher you go, the more the whole surface here expands. And that's not really what we want. We want to have it keep the same value so it also parts will be pushed inside and for this you need to use half of the amount value and multiply it by negative one so for example if i have here an amount of two then this shift value should be set to negative one and that just defines that our mid gray value in the displacement map will be no displacement and everything that's lower than this mid gray value will be pushed inside and everything that's higher than this mid gray value will be pushed outside. So like this, now the displacement map shows correctly here on our island. And I think the result looks better than with a normal map. So normally I tend to not use a normal map in this kind of workflow with an offline renderer like V-Ray, but I tend to generate all the details with the displacement map. You can use an additional normal map on top, but this one should be only for high frequency details, for example, which you couldn't achieve with a displacement map. And you shouldn't add a normal map 
that basically contains the same kind of detail level to a displacement map because then it would basically just use both of them together you will get a kind of really strange looking result so normally with a displacement map you don't really need to use any kind of bump map in the shader and just generate all the detail from the displacement map if you want to learn more about the correct displacement workflow, you can also check this link that should pop up here on the screen somewhere. And there I go in many more details about how to set up displacement maps correctly. So now the finalizing steps are quite easy. We just need to connect our diffuse map and our roughness map. Let's just start with the roughness map first and let's just duplicate, just put it down here. And then also make sure that this filter multiplier is set to the minimum value. And then also this color space transfer function should be none because it's raw data. Then we can just connect that here in our reflection glossiness. And mine, this one here is a roughness map, but V-Ray expects a glossiness map. In order to change that, you can just switch this type from glossiness to roughness. And now you can see that this name also updated here and now it expects a roughness map so everything is fine now the only thing left to do is now to increase this reflection value to pure white and then have a correct ior value i just leave it here at 1.6 for now and now we can see we have some reflections showing up that we can see in our specular pass and also in our reflection pass and that is now fine and now the only thing left to do is to add the diffuse map so for this let's duplicate this albedo map that's how it's called in mega scans and just make sure that this color space transfer function is set to sRGB and then also use the minimum filter multiplier and then just connect this to the diffuse map. And now we're basically finished. So now we're loading the correct data from the diffuse map. We have all the details from our displacement map and then we also have the correct roughness map. And now we can just zoom back, go to our original camera view. And now we can see our final asset where all the data is loaded correctly now from Megascans. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper into the topic, here is a version that I did where I combined some procedural displacement for the rocks together with the displacement of the snow that comes from Megascans. So you can layer different kind of displacement and get some much nicer results. And you can find the video of this in my Patreon, also together with this scene file. So if you're interested in that, check this one out. Other than that, that concludes basically this tutorial here. And I hope to see you in the next one. Like, comment and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care.